Russian mill bloggers are furious at the failure of the Russian military to contain the Ukrainians across the Dnipro. Just how many Ukrainians have crossed? What are they doing there? And why is Russia so worried about it? We're going to break it all down right now. I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It's November 11th, 2023. This is your daily Ukraine update. Let's get into it. Okay, first, taking a look at the control map. There actually hasn't been any substantial updates, but what I wanted to point out is, again, Ukrainian forces continuing to secure this extensive bridgehead along the Dnieper. And at this point, we are seeing video come out of many Ukrainian forces crossing in amphibious vehicles. And so while they're not moving a ton of supplies across, what you are seeing seeing is that they're able to do so with relative impunity. And this has a lot of Russian forces very worried. When we look over at the combat map, you can see what we're talking about. Russian forces uh, launching 59 combat attacks, a pretty significant increase. Uh, now, publicly, the Ukrainians are not discussing whether or not Russian counterattacks are uh, in this Dnipro area. But significantly, you can see that the Russian forces are, of course, attacking across the front line with a really heavy concentration in Avdivka. It shows that whoever's at the Kremlin isn't interested in playing defense. They're still using their fairly limited material resources to push into Avdivka very hard, as well as in Bakhmut and a number of other areas. Um, the problem is that I think Russia is has burned a lot of their material. We're starting to see uh, really Soviet-era tanks operating in and around Avdivka. We're talking about, you know, very old-school 50-plus-year-old tanks. And that is a sign, of course, that this is where Russia's best, their A-grade material, the stuff they've been not deploying elsewhere on the front line, uh, was going into Avdivka. And the fact that it's all basically been crushed is a sign that Russia has, you know, I won't say they failed in it. Well, they failed their objective in Avdivka. And even if they had succeeded, it, it seems unlikely they would have been able to convert this into any kind of larger success. So the fact that uh, they've thrown all this material to achieve nothing and simultaneously have begun to lose ground across the Dnipro is a really bad sign for Russian command if they're even getting accurate information. When we look over at Twitter, you can see there are a lot of uh, images here. First off, of Ukrainian troops crossing into the Dnipro with these patrol boats. Um, you can also see uh, additional troops in these larger amphibious landing vehicles crossing in broad daylight, which is pretty surprising, right, to see. But then you also look as you scroll up, you can see some footage of these uh, armor. These are amphibious uh, kind of infantry fighting vehicles that Ukraine, the Ukrainians are using. Again, also old Soviet armor, right? A BTR 4E. Um, but let's see if we can find it here, right? There's also a lot of footage I can't show you of the Ukrainians counterattacking or Russians counterattacking and Ukrainians repelling them. But here's what we're looking at. This is 21 hours ago, footage here of uh, Ukrainian tankers in an amphibious um, infantry fighting vehicle. You can see them crossing, again, in broad daylight under little observation, uh, simply strolling, basically, across the Dnipro. And this amphibious vehicle is bringing not only troops, uh, but it's also bringing firepower itself, right? You can see it has a turret, has a fairly robust cannon here. So this is going to not just cross with troops and material, but it's going to join the fight itself. And if you're Russian troopers, especially in a low priority area of the front, um, the ability of Ukrainian forces to call on armored fighting vehicle support is critical. And you can see here, there's already a boat ramp of sorts constructed. You've got Ukrainian troops doing some receiving, um, you know, bringing in these amphibious operators. Really, this is a pretty light version, but this is exactly what you'd expect from amphibious operations. But but the takeaway, guys, is that this is really underway. The Ukrainians are serious about this. They're not dipping out. And more troublingly, the Russians can't seem to muster the people to push them out. Now, if you uh, are a fan of this channel, you might know that I run a newsletter. It's a free. It's called the Strategic Set Rep. And what it is, I take the most relevant national security geopolitical stories um, in the uh, really uh, of the week, and we distill them down in a non-biased, non-partisan way. Uh, we simply s provide you guys a factual summary of what's going on, and critically, we give you a so what. What does it all mean? Uh, and 
you know, there's no spin, there's no partisanship. We give it away for free. If you're interested in signing up, uh, you can check us out at strategicsetrep.com. Uh, you can, of course, uh, check it out. You know, you can read it for free, but if you sign up, um, you know, it's it's also free and it'll be in your inbox once a week. We don't spam you. We don't resell your email. Um, it's just a way for uh, you guys to get the news you need, me to give you guys the stories that I can't get to you on YouTube. So if you're interested, again, links in the description. Check us out. Sign up. Um, and let's talk about the Russian mill blogger space. Um, it's been... Pretty worked up about this uh, failure of Russian forces to push the Ukrainians off from Kherson. Now, interestingly, the Institute for the Study of War is actually pretty negative. Uh, they're they're dismissive of the Ukrainian efforts on the east bank of the of the Kherson Oblast. And on one hand, you see why, right? It's hard to get heavy armor across that bridgehead. Um, it seems unlikely that Ukrainian forces will stage a major breakthrough. Um, but here's the thing, for it to be highly successful, they don't have to. Um, diverting elite Russian troops into Kherson Oblast is is itself a victory. Um, and as we've seen here, you can launch a substantial offensive without necessarily aspiring to take dozens of kilometers a day. Um, Russian mill bloggers, of course, are complaining that well, the Russians are just allowing this to happen. They have terrible counter-battery fire, um, lack of electronic warfare, no air defenses, and a lack of assault operations. Uh, that the um, elite Spetsnaz brigades are being ordered to conduct frontal assaults like every other uh, terrible Russian infantry against Ukrainian positions on the bank, even though they're clearly ineffective. Um it's and the mill bloggers themselves are really worried about Ukrainians expanding their operations in Kherson, um, even though other mill bloggers say they're currently unable to achieve a breakthrough. And I think it's true. I would agree that that Ukrainians are unlikely to achieve a breakthrough simply because, as you see, they can get material and soldiers across, but uh, to achieve a breakthrough, they're going to need to 10x that number. They need to create an actual bridge. And the fact is that they. Uh, unless they achieve total constant air and artillery superiority, a bridge is unlikely to be built anytime soon. So that doesn't mean though that Ukrainian forces are failing or have no chance of success, right? Yes, you are not going to see armored forces sweep across Kherson. It's not going to happen. But what could very well happen is that the Russian forces here could be slowly ground out. If Ukrainians can hold places like Kazachi Lahari, um, Pidstepne, Purishchankiva, right? If they can start to build their own kind of wall across the, the Dnipro, right? Oleshki, uh, if they can do that, then you're going to put yourself in a situation where they could potentially construct a pontoon bridge or simply containing them. I mean, look. Look at what it took to contain this small uh, salient here near Robtina. It took basically all of Russia's elite VDV units. Everything that existed on the front line had to be diverted to contain this, which means that if you have to run it, run that a second time, you 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 have no choice but to make bad. You have you have to rob your best units a third time. Right, a bunch have already been pulled out to be get ground into the dirt in Avdivka. Others are defending in and around Bakhmut. Others in Robtina. And now they have to do it again. It's not about having units. Russia has the manpower advantage. But if they don't have good quality fighting units that can actually mount substantive resistance, then they're going to start to get rolled over here. And the fear that Russia has, I think, is that if they have to start switching these units between these two fronts, that they're going to eventually not be able to stop you, the Ukrainian grind, right? That these units are going to get ground down um, and be unable to continue to resist Ukrainian efforts to liberate their territory. Um, you know, it, there's a lot of other complaints that Russian mill bloggers have that they think are uh, endemic and are reflective of Russia's failure to to stop what right now is a very small bridgehead. Um, 
you know, they talk about the fact that the Russian military has terrible communications, poor planning and preparation prior to missions, uh, Russian commanders selling many of their gear um, or and are uninterested in learning from mistakes or acknowledging battlefield realities. We've talked about this in other videos, that this is definitely endemic of the Russian way of war. And while it's hard because military has only evolved in the face of total failure. And Russia, Russia's military has not experienced total failure. They've certainly failed in the Battle of Kiev, failed to hold Kharkiv, failed to hold Kherson. But beyond that, they are achieving some level of uh, success, given that success for them is simply holding Ukrainian territory. Therefore, they don't need to evolve. Uh, as Ukrainian forces... Um, they, when Ukrainian forces fail to, for example, liberate substantial territory in Zaporizhia, uh, they need to go back to the drawing board, and they are right. That's why you're seeing this this crazy river crossing, uh, a bold operation, but reflective of the fact that Ukraine understands they've got to evolve their tactics. Anyway, guys, that is really all I had for you. Thank you so much to our Colonel tier members at CombatVetNews.com, our Lieutenant tier members, uh, and all the members at CombatVetNews.com. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much. Hit like and subscribe. See ya.